So that's a high-level overview of the product. Um, what I want to do now is just jump right in and show you a demo of how it works. So I'm going to go, hopefully you can see my screen, yes? <laughs> yep, so, I've got your screen, Nick. Perfect. So anybody can follow along. We made the product completely free. We started with calling it Data Studio 360, then we offered a free version, and then we decided to make the whole product free. So anybody can follow along. You can go to datastudio.google.com, uh, and you can follow along. So what I'm going to do is show you, uh, take you through the product by creating a brand new report. I'm going to go ahead and click on blank here. Okay. The first thing I need to do is add data to the report. So I'm going to click this create new data source. So we have a bunch of connectors to different types of data, and we're continuously adding more and more. Um, you know, at Google, we have a lot of popular products, so we've added connectors directly to those products. We've, we know a lot of data lives outside of Google, you know, in on-premise data, so we have connectors to MySQL and Postgres, uh, different databases. Um, we also have generic connectors like Sheets and BigQuery, which allows people to have data, um, maybe that we don't have a connector, they can go through these other mechanisms and get data into their product. Finally, recently, we launched the ability to upload files. So uh, we have two gigabytes of storage that you can add files and append data uh, to do it. So for this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Analytics, uh, Google Analytics. Um, and I'll go ahead and connect here. And I get a bunch of data default, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this data and add it to the report. Okay, so I've added my Google Analytics data to report. It's that easy. And now I'm going to start building a report. So we really try to design this to look like an application uh, product. And to start visualizing data, I can go into this uh, toolbar, I can click time series, and I could just go ahead and drag and drop the visualization directly on the canvas. And what we really wanted to do here is empower users to build the experience uh, around their data uh, exactly the way they wanted to do it. So I visualized this time series, and notice that we understand the concept of date, we understand some of the default uh, you know, data that's available in, in Google Analytics that we've connected to. And just like that, we're visualizing data. Now, there's a bunch of different charts, and I could go ahead and switch this to a chart. So I can go to a bar chart. I could see it. Um, we have combo charts. Um, we have pie charts. And notice that we're, we're updating the, the data to, to give a, a good representation of how it should look. So make it really easy to play around with the different data. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just create a little report. I'm going to Control-C, Control-V. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'll bring this down here. Why don't we make that into a map? I'll control C, Control V. Why don't I come over here and make this into a pie chart? And I'll go ahead and add a little text box here. Text sample report. And let's just make this a little bit bigger, like a title. Great. These look a little bit low, so why don't I go ahead and bring them up here. And now I can go into this view experience, and just like that, I've created reports uh, in under a minute that's starting to visualize my data, right? Very simple. And so uh, we've added a lot of customization and capabilities to the product as well. So for all the data I have access to that I'm connecting to, I could come in and configure anything. So here I'm looking at sessions. Here we have like all the data we have in Google Analytics. So if I wanted to look at, for example, users, um, I want to potentially do a user-centric report, I can go ahead and add users. If I wanted to add another metric of uh, maybe uh, percent, uh, percent new sessions, which is new users, I could go ahead and add that as well. Now that's going to actually, you know, percentage is going to be on a different scale, so I have a bunch of different style options where I can actually put the second series here on the right side to get the right percentage. So just like that, I can start playing with the data. Uh, we make it really easy to, to customize these things. And one of the things that we wanted to do is make it really easy for people to make these reports interactive, right? You know, sometimes you'll create a static report and you'll share it, and then your stakeholders will start asking questions. Well, instead of having them come back to you and then you update in the report, um, we want to make these reports interactive so they can start answering their own questions. So the first thing we have is the ability to add uh, a date range here. So I can go ahead and add a date range. I can go ahead and set this to any sort of default. So we can say last 28 days and apply it. And then when I go into this view experience, I have this little control 
that I could click on, and now, now any of my viewers can now interact with it and notice how everything's updating here on the fly, right? Really easy way to make these reports interactive for, for data that's, that's uh, uh, trending over time. The other thing we have is the ability to add uh, more dynamic uh, interactive filters. So let me just move this over here, and I'll go ahead and add what we call our filter control. So the filter control, um, there's a couple ways you can visualize it. There's a drop down, but I like uh, expanding this out here. Um, and so here I have medium. I can actually configure this to have any of the dimensions in, in Google Analytics. So for example, let's say um, uh, I want to look at the default channel grouping. Great. Uh, I could just add it on here. And so now when I view, I have this control here. And so if I wanted to now look at the total number of users and percentage of new sessions, uh, for my social campaigns, I could go ahead and click on that, and everything now updates, right? Um, if I want to now look at email, I can go ahead and do so uh, and start exploring about how my emails campaigns are, are trending over time. We find this really useful because as you start exploring, you know, when you look at this, the total, you see one story, but when you start trending out the details, you start to see that sometimes there's some spikes that lead the total to be really large, but they're actually not sustained over a period of time. So again, this is just a really quick way, uh, an example of how you can put together a report really fast uh, with any of the data we have access to uh, on, in your data uh, using Studio. So we talked about creating these reports. One of the things that we also uh, heard from a lot of customers is they had a hard time sharing reports. Right? You usually put this in a PowerPoint and you email it around and then somebody adds something to it and so you start adding versions and then you have a whole thread of a bunch of different versions of attachments. Um, it's pretty amazing how much work is, is just around managing these things. And so we looked at Google of how do we make uh, sharing easy and we just saw that Google Drive was actually a really easy mechanism. So we completely uh, you know, integrate with Google Drive. I can make this report completely public so anybody uh, who has access to this can view it, or I could turn it off if, uh, if I uh, want to keep it private. Um, one of the things I want to do is, so Mary, if you can help me here, um, let's say I wanted to add Mary to have access to this. So it's uh, M. Andrews, I think, right? Yep, that's it. At Cardinal Path. You got it. Does that look right? <laughs> so I'm going to give... Uh, Mary access here to edit this, uh, and I'll go ahead and, yep, it picked it up. So I, I went and sent it to her, um, an invitation. So what she should get is an uh, email uh, asking, uh, inviting her to come into this report that I just uh, shared access with her. And so you, you must have seen it because I see you here now in the report. And one of the other things that we've integrated with uh, our G Suite and Google Drive is the ability to collaborate in real time. So Mary, if you can go into the edit mode, which I gave you access to, and if you can click on one of the charts, what I can see is Mary here is uh, in the chart as well. So uh, maybe we can change some of the colors and look and feels. Maybe we can use green. Um, and so what you can see here is, uh, Mary can go ahead and update the colors up at the top in the chart, and I could actually go ahead and update the colors on mine down below. And what we've integrated here is this, this concept of real-time collaboration. And so what, where this becomes really powerful is what we see is people creating reports, uh, sharing the reports with executives, and executives start saying, well, what if we could change X or Y and Z? Instead of going back and taking a whole bunch of time to go through that whole workflow that we talked about earlier, you can actually go into edit mode, change it in real time, and everybody who has access to the report can see the updated information. So it dramatically saves a significant amount of time uh, to, to, to reflect what you actually want to see. Um, and it becomes really powerful when, when somebody asks you to, for some new information, and instantly you can give it to them without having to, to go offline, pull the information, and then uh, rejoin in the conversation. Yeah, so, Nick, I love this feature. We work in really distributed teams, and, and same with our clients. They're often really distributed, and so being able to really work in real time with them as you talk things through is really helpful and valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, you know, 
it's it's kind of interesting because when you think of dashboarding, you think of okay, well this this is a this is a way to just you know report on my data, but in many ways, what the dashboard is and is you know what we're, the way we view it is really is a communication channel. It's a way to communicate your data to other people, right? And the ability to have flexibility, you know, the flexibility over how you communicate is what differentiates effective communication versus non-effective communication, right? It's, in some ways, it's the, you could think of why do we have salespeople, right? It's to help other people make a decision on what to buy, right? And, and that requires a tailored, a tailoring um, information to the audience. And that's really what a tool like Data Studio starts enabling you to do. Um, and as people start giving you feedback around, you know, the dialogue you're having around the information, being able to react in real time uh, to update and reflect what they're interested in becomes really powerful. Great, so that's a quick overview of, the, uh, of Data Studio. Um, there's a ton of features. There's a, we can do a more advanced demo in the future, but for there, why don't we leave it at that?